The funny thing is, I have a little bit of a fear of heights, but not a fear of flying. So the flying part was absolutely amazing. It was just a get going part that was a little bit iffy. And that brings me straight towards astronomical amounts of civil lines. I hope you enjoy. So, hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder, to a gameplay in the Frank Knox. Yeah, I know it's a premium US destroyer, and they are well known for making a considerable amount of civil lines, but I wanted to just break the curse. You see, I had a couple of games already earning over 1 million civil line in normal realistic battle uh, in, in, in naval forces, and um, never in the Frank Knox. And then I had two games in which I earned a million civil lines, but it was this one where I recorded it. And it was actually not the best gameplay. And to be honest, in theory, I'll, I'll, I did the math, um, in a good game with the right boosters, you know, it's technically possible to go to two, hell, even three million silver lines. And it's your choice. If you want to stay poor, Okay, stay poor and don't play naval. Because at the end of the day, it's your choice. It's your decision, right? Here is a possibility that the game gives you. And I'm not quite sure how long this opportunity stays like this to earn that huge amounts of civil lines. What I'm trying to say is, I get it that you don't like to play ships because naval forces is not really amazing. Um, there are balancing problems. There are debatable game mechanics. The maps are strange, etc., etc. You're absolutely right, and you shouldn't think about naval forces being fun, but really worth it in sen in the sense of civil lines, right? And I'm sitting on over 330 million civil lines. So I have a fairly good idea what I'm doing. And there are further tricks how to last longer in a ship in naval forces. Um, there are good tricks how to get 300% civil line boosters every single day for free. And as you can see, 32,000 civil lines for a single kill. And that's without the winning bonus. That's without the uh, anti mac order that I'm activating right now. And um, I actually should explain why the anti mac order in combination with a premium account, a premium ship, and um, some stacked boosters is absolutely the secret thing to get really absurdly rich quickly. Now, first of all, you can also do it with Tech Tree Cruisers. They earn three quarters of the best premium ships in terms of civil line earning. And also the repair cost of any of the ship is not really worth talking about. It's just that it's so extreme with the US destroyers because they are just very good with their guns. The DPM, their armor, the AA, in this case, even the radar, the ammunition, etc., etc. And, you know, sometimes it goes like this. Watch this. First several and boom. Isn't that a nice number? <laughs> yeah, I uh, aim for the rear ammo rack, which is the weak spot of the Moffats. Um, that weak spot is still there on the Frank Knox, but not that prominent. So it takes longer to actually get an ammo rack hit, if at all, on the Frank Knox. So... Okay, let's exp let's talk about the Antimac order. If you activate it, you have a time frame of five minutes in which you have to kill enemies. And the person on both teams, that's important to know, that kills the most actually is the one who gets rewarded. The civil lines that you got already for the amount of kills that you killed tripled in addition to what you already have earned and if you get a lot of civil lines already for the reason that you have a premium ship with uh, two three hundred percent booster stacked in this case um that can be an absurd amount the most that i did i think was like half a million um but i didn't record it so you have to trust me 
and uh, in this gameplay i was absolutely unlucky as you can see there are some competitors with me that also have already one kill i don't have that much time left although i'm much better with aiming than this guy and um, i just know where the shells do damage and i get the kill the problem is um, i have to fight now the damage con thing uh, first extinguish the fire then repair the machinery and that takes just so much time um, it's still a stupid system in my opinion, but that's just what we have to go with and as you can see uh, There are some other people as well that also now have made two kills in the meantime, so I am on par with them and um, Yeah, it's just always the same thing that you you want to showcase something and then it doesn't work um, Obviously it requires a little bit of experience that you have to activate the endemic order which is highly precious for me personally um, at the right time when you just have the experience that you can kind of calculate when to expect to get some kills right it always uh, there is always the possibility that uh, somebody is just so much better than you uh, or you're unlucky and you die while you want to get some kills um, but if you prepare it correctly which I did not do in this gameplay then you can really really see the payoff and that brings me back to the money. Now imagine you earn, let's say, 100,000 silver lines in a normal battle without boosters, wages, etc. Just a normal random battle. And then it's pure profit, right? Just how long does it take in a plane or especially in tank matches to get that as pure profit? Sure, if you're an absolute um, pro, then you earn it probably once every two battles in in planes or in tanks it takes maybe a bit longer but it's doable but it's also highly risky right now with ships it's just a continuous income that is just so much higher because gachin is so bad at dealing uh, with the issues in naval forces that you know they want to lure in the people by making the rewards just that high it's obvious but you can use it you know you can earn yourself so many silver lines that you can save for the next sale that you can just wait for the next discounts and then just get so many vehicles and have enough silver lines left to not care about repair costs ammunition costs um, or even can afford the expert qualification right so this is why I just have no problem in that aspect, never had. And that is really, really important to see it like this. Also, you see, I launched the torpedoes at this stationary Admiral Hippa class. I think it's a Prinz Oing, yeah. And um, at any time, he just could move a little bit. I even shot him as a warning, right? So there is no way those torpedoes should hit. Also, my torpedoes have a really low yield and the Admiral Hippa class, the Prince Eugen in particular, has a torpedo bulkhead protecting the innermost parts of the ship um, by reducing the TNT yield of a torpedo by 250 kilograms. And I have less than 250 kilograms of yield, so he would be particularly unlucky if he would die to those torpedoes. Just saying. Um, yeah, I also um, had here a special occasion where multiple people actually got enough kills to be um, on, on the same amount of kills after this battle, um, after the Entamec order ran out. And so everybody got it. Now, here we have an interesting situation where this US cruiser shot at me, was bad at aiming, and I tried to get the hell out of it. How can I win? In a fight versus a heavy cruiser that I cannot really penetrate well it's very simple you just simply turn away and then wait for the right moment to activate the smoke I launched the torpedoes not at that guy I couldn't properly even hit it and uh, I'm for the ships behind him so he couldn't really uh, just for my turn and miss the shots and so I now put the smoke between that guy and myself 
he has no idea where I'm heading from now on. And um, if I'm also lucky, then he loses the lock on, you know, the gray box, as you can see uh, that I have on this guy. So I get away from this and I continuously hammer the other destroyers with sap rounds. I'm safe. And yeah, I know there are many bots currently going around, but just use them, farm them. And uh, yeah, I got just shot by the uh, Admiral Hipper and now I'm in a very tough spot because also my machinery has been destroyed or I lost half my propulsion. And the only way I can escape is going behind the island. Um, I could try to turn away from the line of sight of the Admiral Hipper um, but, well, the problem is, it takes too long, and turning takes a very long time. I still smoke up to be safe from that US heavy cruiser that I turned away initially, and I hope I can make it to that island to be safe from the cruiser to my left. Or in this case, when you look at the footage from the right. So I ignore the flooding and concentrate on the repairing of my propulsion, and I'm almost, almost in cover. Um, yeah, I'm on fire at 9%. And yeah, I got this guy. And actually killed the Prince Eugen with torpedoes. And then killed the Moffat. So that was particularly lucky. And I survive here only because I have a bit more crew left than the usual player. Because I played the USS Frank Knox already so much that I got the ace qualification. And yeah, that's worth it. Um, the little bit of advantage in firefighting, um, in repairing, etc., etc., it just stacks up. And you can go down, I think, even to 8% of crew and still not get to the automatic drown mechanic. So there's that. And now my main goal is to survive. I don't think that I can uh, kill any more ships, but then, you know, a happy patrol boat feeds itself to me. And I switch to HE and then detonate the bot. But, you know, detonating bots is still really worth it. I secured the only cap and thus we are about to win the game. Now, again, this is not really the best gameplay that I did. It's not the most amazing one, but it showed a little bit a combination of luck. I was still there in an up tier. I played the map correctly, going around the island, surprising some enemies, one-shotting them, and uh, being lucky that nobody was better at me in those five minutes, killing more, um, killing more enemies than me. Again, it's the stacking of the premium ship with its really, really high modifiers for civil lines. Um, it is the fact that I stacked two 300% boosters. It would be more efficient to play two games and not stacking the 300% boosters, but playing one game each with a 300% booster, and then just trying to win. That's giving another booster plus the anti-mech order, and let's have a look at the result, and boom, there it is. A million civil lines in 13 minutes. <laughs> and I mean, imagine buying a $70 chat premium pack or a $60 premium tank pack, and not even coming close to being able to earn this. And uh, even with boosters, wages, orders, whatever. I think it's really convincing. And it's your choice. And if you really, really refuse to give money to Gaijin. Which I totally understand the point of view. Well, then if you play free to play. You are the product. And the free to play games are usually the most expensive ones. But that's really a bargain that I actually can recommend at any time. I made already the aiming guide, the ammunition guide, links in the description down below, so there is no excuse. And that's it for me today, so thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Please give this video a like if you did, subscribe if you want to see more, and we'll see each other in the skies, on the battlefields, and on the waves of War Thunder.